SA Secret Tax Shelter Benefits. Hey everyone, Adam Bergman here, tax attorney and founder of IRA Financial. On today's ad bits, the health savings account, which is a very, very underrated and not widely known, very, very, very tax beneficial account. And it's very much like a Roth IRA because the huge benefit of an HSA, which I'll get to in details in the next five or six minutes, give you every detail you need to know on the HSA account because it's really not widely known. It's not widely used. And it's really, really advantageous from a tax standpoint and also obviously to pay medical, uh, eligible medical benefits. So the key, like any IRA or Roth IRA, is the contributions you put in are able to grow tax-free, okay? So you are limited on how much you can put in, but you, and there are also limitations on who can make contributions, but once you make those contributions, the contributions that remain in the account, you can use them for eligible medical expenses. The interest or earnings on those assets are in the account tax-free. You get to take advantage of the power of compounded returns. You can make contributions, your employer can make contributions, and the contributions your employer makes for you is not included in gross income. And you get a tax deduction for these contributions, right? I saved the best for last. You get a tax deduction, so it's like a pre-tax IRA. The money grows without tax. You can pull it out tax-free so long as you use it for eligible medical expenses. If you die, you can pass it to your wife tax-free, your spouse tax-free, your husband tax-free. Um, it's amazing. Okay, it's just an incredible, incredible account, which not enough people know about, unfortunately. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you all the info you need. So what is an HSA? An HSA is a tax-exempt trust or custodial account you set up with a qualified HSA trustee like IRA Financial. The difference between a HSA with IRA Financial and Fidelity is with HS the HSA with IRA Financial, we're going to let you do alternative assets. So let's say you have 20, 30, 50 grand in your HSA and you want to take a little and buy gold or buy cryptos or invest in crowdfunding or invest in a private placement or a private stock or hedge fund, venture capital fund, whatever. You can do it with IRA Financial, whereas you would not be able to do it with a traditional institution. So who can set one up? Well, anyone can do it. Okay, we'll go through the requirements. You need to be in a high deductible plan. Um, you obviously have to use a qualified custodian like IRA Financial or a financial institution. The benefits are obviously you get a tax deduction, your employer can make contributions for you and, and all the income and gains in the retirement, in the HSA, which is like a retirement account, grows without tax, um, which is obviously super exciting. So who can qualify? Okay, so in order to be able to make an HSA contribution, you have to be covered by what's called a high deductible health plan, which I'll explain in a minute, okay? You have to have no other health coverage except what is permitted under the health coverage. You aren't enrolled in Medicare and you can't be claimed as a dependent. So you're not like a kid. So what's a high deductible health plan? It's a higher annual deductible than typical health plan and a maximum limit on the sum of the annual deductible and out-of-pocket medical expenses that you may that you must pay for covered expenses. And out-of-pocket expenses include co-payments and other amounts, but don't include premiums. So you may not know it, but most Employer plans are high deductible health plans. Um, like IRA Financial, we we have a high deductible health plan, so we we offer HSAs. Um, it's very very common. So you just may need to ask your um, human resource department or your uh, office manager to see if your employer medical plan is a high deductible plan. And if it is, you can do your own HSA. And the beauty of doing your own HSA again is you can put in a certain amount of money, which we'll get to in a second, tax deductible, the money grows without tax, and then you can use it for qualified medical expenses. So how much can you put in, okay? So the maximum you can put in for an HSA, okay, is if you are single, self-only coverage, 4,150, 4,150 for 2024, okay? If you are family, the most a family can put in is 8,300. If for those over 55, you can do a thousand dollar catch up. So 4150 would be 5150, 8300 would be 9300. And um, if you have obviously two spouses, that's 10,300 for HSA married couple over the age of 55. So that's a lot of money. Even if you're single under 55, it's still 4150, and all that adds up, right? You, you start doing this for three, four years and invest those funds. You may have 30, 40,000 bucks that you can use to pay 
qualified medical expenses, and they basically include almost everything. Doctor visits, medications, medical equipment, dental and vision care for you, your spouse, and dependents. Uh, qualified medical expenses are those expenses that would generally qualify for the medical and dental expenses deduction. Um, it, it could be expenses that you incur, your spouse incurs, and all dependents. Insurance premiums. So you can't treat insurance premiums as qualified medical expenses unless the premiums are for any of the following. Long-term care, healthcare continuation like COBRA, and healthcare coverage while receiving unemployment compensation. Okay, so you can still use your HSA to pay for all these out-of-pocket costs that are obviously qualified medical expenses like we've all going to, like the cost to go to a doctor, right? There's all these costs that are incurred when you go to the doctor. There's medicine, there's equipment you got to pay, right? And then obviously the dental and vision, which is really expensive. So the beauty is you want to contribute to an HSA every year a little bit, and obviously you stay healthy for 5, 10, 15, 20 years, and that money just grows, 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 grows. So then God forbid you get really sick in 10, 15, 20 years, your spouse gets sick, you have all this money built up that you can pay for things that your insurance doesn't cover, like all this equipment or medical visits and medication, which is you know super, super expensive. So, and again, if you don't use it, you can pass it to a spouse on your death. And if no one uses, you can just pull the money out and pay tax on it, but at least it's there for a rainy day. So record keeping, how hard is it? It's really easy. You're in charge, your own record keeping. Um, you basically just have to keep sufficient records that you're using this for uh, medical expenses qualified and not using it to go to Hawaii. Um, and again, it's, it's very, very light. We're, we're the custodian, we're the trustee of the HSA. So Ira Financial, if you're using us for the HSA, super, super easy. Um, if you take a distribution from your HSA to pay for qualified medical expenses, you don't pay tax on the distribution, right? As long as you use it for qualified medical expenses. If you use it to buy yourself a Rolex, then you're going to obviously pay tax on that. You got to report the distri distribution on Form 8889, um, but there's no tax if you, so long as you use it for qualified medical. If there's a balance that's used for not for exempt purposes. You obviously have to pay tax on what you pull out. Um, what else? The 8889 is actually really simple. You file it with your 1040. Um, and you must follow the form, even if only your employer, or your spouse made the contribution. So it's a form that lets the IRS know, you know, who's doing what employer. So it's very, very interesting and, and not widely used, especially by, um, smaller and mid-sized companies that employers can actually help their employees by doing HSA contributions and it's tax deductible to the employer. You just need to make sure that you're doing it across the board for everyone. Uh, so there's comparable contributions, uh, it's deductible. And obviously it's great for the employee because they get to use it for qualified medical expenses outside of their insurance coverage. And it's just a nice employee perk that people really appreciate. So um, I'm a big HSA fan. Um, I think it's really important. Even if you're putting in a thousand bucks a year, the money grows without tax. And unfortunately, listen, we're all human. Like our bodies break down. I'm getting close to 50. I feel it. I feel older than I did, you know, seven, eight years ago. And, you know, you go to a doctor and there's always additional costs and, and the medication is, is also, um, you know, significantly expensive. So it's there, you're going to use it. And if you don't use it, thank God, then you can pass it to your spouse, your kids can use it or even for dental or vision um, or, or all the other qualified medical expenses. And there's a lot of them. It's almost anything under the sun that you can use it for, except paying for the actual insurance premiums. Um, so... That's it. Again, you don't have to do alternative assets with an HSA. You are allowed to do alternative assets. Again, you can do gold, crypto, real estate. You can do crowdfunding, private placements, hedge funds, private equity, venture capital, option trading, you know, day trading. Um, or you could just do regular equities like stocks or mutual funds, ETFs, or you could do both. We just offer the, the plan to those that have saved up over the years and have a little bit of extra money, want to diversify, want to get a little bit more of an alpha, a little bit of a higher return on their investments. So they want to turn to alternative assets for a portion of their HSA money. And we, we provide that service. So hopefully now you understand everything you need to know about the HSA. It's a really great plan. It's like a traditional IRA, except you have to use it for qualified medical expenses. And um, once you pull that money out to use for qualified medical expenses, very light on record keeping, and obviously it's tax-free when you pull it out. Your employer can also make comparable HSA contributions for employees, which is again a nice perk and it's tax deductible to the employer. So it's like an additional uh, benefit on top of uh, insurance. So 
I hope you guys enjoyed uh, the podcast today. Um, that's it for me. Uh, have a great day. I'll see everyone again uh, next week. Thanks. Thank you.